Mad Doctor of Blood Island, 1968, directed by Eddie Romero, starring John Ashley, Angelique Pettyjohn, and Roland Remy. A group of people travel to an island for various personal reasons, where a murderous menace is on the loose and a mystery needs to be solved. Some sites falsely advertise this film as featuring zombies. There actually aren't any. Which is a shame because I was in a zombie mood this week. Zombies are generally the reanimated dead. This is about a mutation. There's also only one creature, though we do see other people at various stages of mutation. There is a green blood oath in the beginning of the film, which is very William Castle. Castle, a personal favorite of mine, was known for incorporating gimmicks in his films, like rigging skeletons to fly over the heads of moviegoers in House on Haunted Hill, and having theaters pass out punishment polls to have the audience decide the fate of the antagonist in Mr. Sardonicus. For Mad Doctor of Blood Island, packets of green liquid were dispersed to theater goers, and they were prompted to drink it at the start of the film so they could safely watch without the fear of contamination. Unfortunately, this film isn't anywhere near as fun as a castle production. There is nudity not even three minutes in. I've never understood the appeal of nudity in horror. I'm just like, get these random boobs out of here! I'm trying to watch a spooky movie! The relationships are so weird in this film. Carlos refers to his mother as a princess that a prince is here to rescue. Sheila, who hasn't seen her father since she was 12, acts very subdued and uninterested. And her father also acts very unnatural. It is also revealed that Carlos' father had relations with a native girl when she was 14. And nobody bats an eyelash at this disgusting revelation. There's an attack scene every 20 minutes. You can practically set a clock to it. The attacks are actually pretty fun. The camera frantically zooms in and out, which shakes up the monotony of the rest of the film. The gore is actually pretty surprising for a 60s film. I think they actually used real animal guts. Unfortunately, you have to sit through 20 minute blocks of monotony. Maybe the zombies people kept talking about are actually the stilted performance of the cast? Verdict? Meh. The attack scenes are fun, but you have to sit through 20 minutes of uninteresting interactions with uninteresting characters to get to them. That concludes this week's review. If there's any obscure sci-fi horror film you'd like to suggest, feel free to leave a comment below. Make sure to tune in next time for another thrilling low-budget adventure.